Hello once again. This is lecture three in our series Power Generation Operation and Control. This is Bruce Wallenberg speaking. Lecture three has to do with industrial organization, managerial economics, and finance. Uh, what we're trying to get at here is to give you some idea of the business background to the electric utility or electric, just, just call it the electric uh, industry. Um, you notice here that um, we, we, we're, we're differentiating regulated and deregulated. And we're going we're gonna to make a case here as to what, what those are. Um, originally, the US and m much of the world was structured to have regulated electric companies. Now, the, the, the reasons, there are lots of reasons why. Uh, if you look up the history, you'll find out that they originally were, they were all kind of free market and competing with each other. And then they, they uh, went to a regulated uh, format. Uh, under the, and the regulated format lasted for an awful long time, till the late 1990s in the US. Uh, the regulated company's prices were fixed by what are called public utility commissions. These are people appointed by the governor, let's say, of a, of a state. Every state had their own commission. And the important thing for the companies was that the commissions, through many different uh, processes and hearings and reports, uh, came to a point where they would say, okay, you may charge this much, be and, and they allowed the electric companies to make a quote-unquote reasonable profit. They were for-profit companies, but uh, the utility commission set their prices at a level where they could make a reasonable profit. Now, in the U.S., the, the, the price of electricity actually came down over a long, long period of time. Uh, we have had many disruptions to the, uh, especially the oil prices, and that has changed that trend somewhat. But over a long period of time, the price came down, and uh, as utilities got more and more efficient and so forth, and, and took advantages of economies of scale. Um, they were re de deregulated in the 1990s, and now generation companies compete to sell power. So the competitive power markets, uh, co generators must compete for business. They can compete for business in two ways. Um, they can enter bids into a spot market and thereby compete with others in the spot market and gain business by putting in lower bids. Or they can um, make direct contact with, with loads, let's say, large industrial or um, municipal uh, power companies that buy large blocks of energy, and then they can negotiate the price directly. We, we call those bilateral contracts. Um, and it's important that, that ultimately, um, if, you, if you live in states where, where they've taken this to the, to the degree uh, necessary, um, if you live in that state, you'll get offers from dozens of power suppliers. And then you get a bill that says, okay, you bought your power from a certain power company, meaning generator company, and then there's transmission charges, and then there are distribution charges, and so forth. Um, the, the generators compete. We do not build duplicate transmission or distribution systems so they're regulated, and basically they they uh, just put a, an ad on to your to your bill. Uh, loads can negotiate directly with multiple generator companies for the best price. So there's there's always that kind of direct uh, uh, negotiation going on over the phone or over the internet. Uh, again, loads can enter bids into a spot market along with generation. Loads can, can say, I'll buy up to this much uh, for this price, and uh, then I, I'll buy even more if the price is lower and so forth. So that within the 
within the market there, um, you end up with a supply and demand curve that are that are matched up, and uh, that kind of uh, matching is is covered in our chapter 11. The market operator runs an auction again to balance load and generation. That's where the the crossover of supply demand occurs, but it has to manage the transmission. Remember that this this kind of system is a just in time, uh, meaning that uh, loads and generation, the purchase and sale, must happen simultaneously. Um, again, as we said before, the transmission and distribution owners receive payments for the use of their wires. Here's a diagram of the regulated um, utility industry. Um, way up at the top in the U.S. anyway, we had federal uh, regulatory, regulatory uh, commission. Um, when I was younger, it was the Federal Power Commission. Now it's called the Department of Energy. Underneath um, that, uh, an, a, a utility has to deal with the State Public Utility Commission to, to set uh, rates. Um, sometimes there's independently owned uh, utilities. Sometimes we have public uh, utilities. Um, many, many small town cities have their own electric utility and they buy power wholesale um, or they may generate it too. And uh, so we deal with, uh, in, we, you see in the, in, the, in the diagram here we have one state, then we have another state and so forth. And we have all the states. Uh, last of all, you can have government, meaning federal government uh, held utilities in the U.S. Uh, the, the two biggest ones are, well, Bonneville Power, uh, TVA, these are large hydro systems, although uh, have incorporated a lot of thermal plants um, and, and other associations. So those are government held. Now the, com the competitive market is, is structured very differently. Way up at the top here again, uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission or, or FERC, uh, which is underneath uh, the Department of Energy. And again, you have state public utility commissions, um, but you you also have an organization such as it, it's it's called NERC, North American Electric Reliability Organization or Corporation now, um, which which provides a lot of the standard settings, and 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 this this organization works hand in glove with the FERC, the, the NERC uh, organization. And underneath this, we have generating companies, transmission companies, distribution companies, what we call load-serving entities, uh, companies that, uh, that simply may buy power and sell it to you, but they don't, they don't own any, any equipment uh, other than a lot of computers. Um, Energy Mercantile Association independent agents that do contracting uh, and so forth, a similar kind of uh, companies down here. The most important thing is that the competition is up at this level and, and a little at, at this level too. Transmission systems and distribution systems do not compete with each other. We're not, we're not going to go out and build two transmission systems and distribution come to your house and say, okay, hook up with the one on the left side of your house or the one on the right side of your house. That doesn't happen. Okay, now, the initial vertical um, integration uh, organization, this is to show you where the, the, uh, the energy is coming from, the wellhead, okay, for, uh, for either oil or gas, uh, mining companies up here, um, you have transportation companies, pipelines, trains, barges on rivers, trucks, to bring either coal or gas or oil. And we have government-owned agencies over here that, that may do similar, but mostly the government doesn't run mining or, or gas companies, but they run large hydroelectric companies. So down here we, we, we 
broke away gas utilities and we have electric utilities. Now these are regulated utilities. So you notice that we have generation, transmission, and distribution. All, all three of those in the regulated environment, the so-called vertically integrated systems, were all together. And down here we have all the customers that may be served by by these and gas utilities that that sold natural gas to businesses and to people houses for heating as another utility and uh, serves the same customers down here at the bottom the next one shows us the same kind of we have the the oil well the coal mine but here's a river system here's the water reservoir here's a hydro plant we've broken out the plants because now these are competing entities. These are competing entities. And you can have a hydro hydro plant compete with uh, fossil units. Um, transportation uh, is basically uh, you well what what we're showing here is here's the transmission distribution. This is the electric over here. Okay. So I'm just going to put E for electric this is H, this is heating. Well, why, why does a power plant go into the heating network? Well, um, the power plant creates a lot of heat with burning coal, burning oil, gas, and in many places, large cities, the, uh, the heat uh, can be piped uh, to businesses and, and homes around the, uh, around the city for heating and, uh, and air conditioning. They can use that energy for, for both those purposes. So it becomes a, a separate uh, uh, transportation, if you will, of, of steam, usually. And down here we have our same customers again, manufacturers, industrials, commercial, residential. The last, the last slide here is, is, is interesting. Um, I, I, want you to, I want you to follow the red here you, you, you should look at this slide as going across this way and then coming back. Okay, that's the way to read this slide. Uh, it was drawn this way to, because to, to fold it like that so that there's, there's a large, uh, you know, it would be too large for the figure. We couldn't have gotten the, the text into the... Uh, into the to the all the different uh, boxes in the, in this this flowchart. So we have coal markets, oil markets, natural gas, and we have generation companies that buy from these these fuel suppliers, if you will. We have transmission companies, multiple transmission companies, um, that basically are 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 out there and connected in into a large network. Then we have distribution. Now again. At this, the bottom part, things are going from right to left. So the distribution company um, may come into these energy service companies that are basically there to just uh, arrange the uh, the 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 whole chain with you and sell you sell the energy to these final customers at the end. So the retail customer may get a bill that reflects something from the energy service company, something from the distribution something from the transmission and something from the generator. Oftentimes they're allowed to choose uh, the generator company. Uh, some of them, you know, are claim to be cheaper. Some of them may claim to be cleaner. They, can, they, they tout themselves as green supply and so on and so forth. Um, so we, 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 we want to say the product, which is electric power, flows the way that one does. The cash, if you will, um, goes. I'm sorry, goes back um, the opposite way. We can draw that with a large dashed lines. So this is the cash, going back this way. So as as a business product is flowing, you know, in 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 the uh, the clockwise direction around this loop. The cash starts at the lower left and flows counterclockwise. Thank you.